Hello everyone, my name is Abhas Chin, and today with me I have Team 16379 Kooky Bots all the way from Washington. They competed at the Maryland Tech Invitational and actually were the third ranked Alliance captain. And you know, they had an excellent run all the way throughout qualification matches, set some really high scores with the top teams, and played exceptionally in the playoffs. You know, unfortunately did go out in the first round, but MTI is just such a tough competition, could have gone either way. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. If you're a college student or recent graduate looking for an incredible internship, take a look at Stryker. Stryker provides a housing stipend, great pay, and an opportunity to work with state-of-the-art medical technology equipment. Discover why so many FIRST alumni are coming to Stryker for their internship or career at careers.stryker.com. Discover MSOE, where hands-on learning today can lead to real-world applications tomorrow, including their We Energy STEM Center, built to support FIRST teams. Head on over to msoe.edu slash visit to see a virtual tour and schedule your campus visit today. Veer, let's start with your drivetrain. You know, you guys aren't running that standard Macadam drive. You're not running a suspension either. Why don't you talk about the design decision behind going with a six-wheel drive and, you know, how it impacted your robot? Yes, yeah, so the reasoning behind my six-wheel drive was because of my strategy. Going into MTI, my goal was to be the best possible shared hub robot and be able to complement top teams who are really good with autonomous and with the Alliance specific hubs. So at Washington State, I saw that the quick agile robots that could dart around the field picking up everything and scoring super fast were the best. And on the shared Alliance hubs, since you're just moving forwards and backwards in a straight line and occasionally a couple uh, arcs, you don't really need to strafe. So I tested my mechanism drivetrain with the strafing disabled and found that it worked perfectly fine. And immediately after switching to a six wheel drive, I realized just how much the benefits of the acceleration and the traction helped when cycling fast. Yeah, and you know, this is a robot you designed specifically for MTI, right? Yeah. And so how did your uh, drivetrain design change since you designed it? Did you make any changes coming into MTI, realize some things were better than others, uh, specifically with your drivetrain? Yeah, so uh, I saw from previous years of MTI that there's a lot more defense. So this center wheel used to be a Go Build a Rhino wheel, but it got switched out to a custom 3D printed wheel with Andy Mark Grey Grippy tread on it for the reason that it just provides a lot more traction. And so we're able to push other robots that might be getting in our way. Sure, and you know, originally I believe you guys started out with six motors in your drivetrain. You decided to yeah. go down to four. How did you realize you needed to do that? Like what was the thinking behind it? Yeah, so initially we were going with six motors because we thought that we would be stalling out our motors before we lost traction. But what we found was that in reality, the robot starts slipping because it's such a light, fast robot. And so the two additional motors were just drawing too much current to be worth it. I see, yeah, I mean, it's great that you realize that before MTI. Yeah. I think that definitely helped your performance. We saw some robots here actually blew out their fuses or had electrical issues yeah. and things like that. Thankfully, you guys were able to, uh, you know, not have any of those issues and play your matches to your fullest ability. Let's go on to your intake. You know, from the beginning, like at first glance, it seems like a pretty simple intake. You're not using an extension or anything like that, but it's just so consistent and so quick. How did you, you know, how did you design something that's this? So there was two main considerations when looking at my intake design. The first one was that with most intakes, when there's blocks stuck in the corner, for whatever reason, the robot can't reach them. And I found that the warehouse empties really, really fast with a good alliance partner. So being able to reach those blocks stuck in the corner was vital. So for that reason, the intake si sticks out a little bit. But on the same, uh, on the same topic, if the ro intake sticks out a lot, then when you're exiting the warehouse, you need to back out even further. So that's why I have a two-spoke uh, surgical tubing holder, so that when I start and stop the intake, it always ends vertical, in effect, making my robot shorter. Yeah, I think that's really clever. Can we show uh, your robot actually intaking a freight quickly? Yeah, so um, we'll talk about this a little later probably, but the arm is automated. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we'll push the freight into the robot and it's right there, in and out, right? So quick. So, you know, your arm's already out here. Let's just talk about it. Can you walk us through the design decision to go behind a turret, an extension, then the deposit, all of those things? Yeah, so on the shared alliance hub, it's a tight space. Like, you don't want to be turning a lot because you might get stuck on the hub. And so for that reason, a turret is basically vital for success. So that's what the turret is for. And then I have slides on my arm so that I can reach the entire hub so pushing one button or one trigger on my gamepad allows me to extend those. And on my bucket, I have a gate. 
I have a gate which allows me to make sure that freight stays in my bucket while this arm is rapidly accelerating to get out of the robot's freight. Yeah, and is that gate something you added right from the get-go? Is it something you saw other teams were doing or how did that uh, design evolve? Yeah, so initially I was thinking about looking at kickers because kickers looked like a great way to A, hold your freight in and B, kick it out. But I saw that with kickers you lose a lot of the precision you get from a bucket. And so I settled with a gate design which also allows me to cap with this gate mechanism which I can probably show a little bit later. Yeah, and you know, we saw you guys in matches using your bucket, flipping it down and then having your gate going into the little slot you had in your ca in your team shipping element. It was definitely super effective. Um, looking back on the design of your robot, are there things you would change to be more competitive or like what are some design considerations you're taking into future years? Yeah, so one thing I think I would have definitely changed is I would have liked to put an odometry pod on this because one part of the competition that uh, this robot was lacking in was autonomous. It only had a one plus two cycling autonomous and that was partly because there wasn't much time left to code one but also because of the limitations of a six wheel drive. Not being able to strafe greatly hurts uh, how precisely you can get through that gap during autonomous. Sure, and you know, talking about odometry and software, let's go on to that. What sensors do you have on the robot? How did you decide to add them and are there any other sensors you would like to add as well? Yeah, so the intake automation uh, is done with a distance sensor in the bucket which automatically detects when freight is intaked so it can extend the arm. But in autonomous, we have a camera on the intake so that when we cycle the duck off the carousel wheel, we can actually detect where it landed and drive directly to it. Because again, we can't strafe along the wall like most teams. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I mean, that's very impressive. I think this is for a one person team, I mean, simply incredible. For a normal team of five to 10, 15 people, this would still be very incredible. You've done a really great job making a super efficient, compact robot. Uh, going into future years, are there like design considerations you wanna take from this and apply to the next robots you build? Yeah, so the main thing I learned this season is that your design matters, but for the competition, you need to make sure that A, you have optimized your design, and B, it is consistent. And I think that is why I was able to rank so high today, is because my lowest match was only 224 points, and besides that, I was hitting 300 pretty consistently, ending with an average score of 278 points per match. Yeah, I, I mean, I think that's great advice to teams. We heard a lot of top teams here at MTI, you know, repeat that same month, or like, you want to have a consistent design, you want to make sure everything is reliable. It doesn't really matter how many you can score, like in a th theoretical or hypothetical situation, it's what you're actually scoring in your matches. And I think you guys really exemplified that. So thank you for the interview. I think it was everyone's going to learn a ton from your robot. There's so much to unpack here. And reporting for First Updates Now, I'm a boss. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Discover MSOE, where hands-on learning today can lead to real-world applications tomorrow, including their We Energy STEM Center, built to support FIRST teams. Head on over to msoe.edu slash visit to see a virtual tour and schedule your campus visit today. If you're a college student or recent graduate looking for an incredible internship, take a look at Stryker. Stryker provides a housing stipend, great pay, and an opportunity to work with state-of-the-art medical technology equipment. Discover why so many FIRST alumni are coming to Stryker for their internship or career at careers.stryker.com. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.